Both of Alexander and some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysander, and such great names as these. But of all... Hello and welcome to today's Battle Mech Review. Today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. The Bushman from Scoble. I say different, but it's uh, quite similar to uh, three big things that we've reviewed in the past in the 275 Mafia. This is basically Scoble's attempt to make a 275 Mafiosi. It's 55 tons. It uses a Cortec 275. Well, at least most of the basic models do. And it's meant to be a mid-range uh, scout hunter slash cavalry mech slash command mech. It does all sorts of things. The big problem with it is that nobody ever bought it. You know me, I kind of like those weird things and uh, those odd mechs that are either about to be extinct or are extinct or are in that weird category. And the Bushman is in a category of its own as a mech that was always around, but nobody ever noticed it. It's a really weird situation, let's say, but not a that odd of a design. We can see here, that's a, an actual uh, sales pitch picture that was in a magazine to SLDF commanders trying to pimp out the Bushman during its uh, early release days in the 2588, uh, actually, is when it was released. It was in production for like three years before, something along those lines. We don't get all the details. Scoble likes to try to obfuscate a lot of it, but it's a... Uh, once again, a basic 275 Mafiosi with basic design specs around the same price as the other ones as well and goes 86 kilometers per hour using that 275 Cortec. It jumps 150 meters using five jump jets, so it does have a better jump range than your Shadowhawk, and it has the same amount of armor, 9.5 tons, at least for your basic model. The equipment is barely basic. On the base model, you get a large laser in the gun mount and a pair of SRM-6 on the shoulder head mount thingies. They're really mounted on the shoulder. You can take them off. I've seen some with LRM-5s instead of SRM-6, but I think those were more variants that people made themselves rather than official ones. There is quite a few different variants of the Bushman. Here we've got the basic uh, record sheet of one. Very decent armor. For a early battle mech, it's got okay weapons with an okay range. It's got both sets of hands. It's fairly rugged. It's fairly tough. The ejection seat is terrible. That's the biggest problem on it. But basically, the, the other big problem is literally, like I said, nobody ever bought it. Scoble brought it up to the uh, Star League as uh, saying like, hey, do you want a brand new 55 ton mech that does the same thing as the other 55 ton mechs? And people were not, you know, super interested in it. The only people who really ended up buying it were uh, specialized mercenary art outfits, paramilitary groups, corporate security is where you're going to see a whole lot of them. So they do exist, but uh, they were fairly rare. What happened most of the time was that people bought Bushmen, stripped the arms off, the legs off, and put them on Griffins, Wolverines, and Shadowhawks, took that Cortec 275 from its innards out and put them in, you know, a Griffin, a Shadowhawk, a Wolverine. And that's how it went. That's an unfortunate case for that mech is that it never got to shine on its own. The only people who really add a decent amount of Bushmen was the Anseathic League because Drakenburn Enterprises had bought a license to build them. So when Clan Goliath Scorpion faced the might of the Anseatic League, well, they had a few Bushmen in store. It's not a terrible design. You are going to be able to get into fairly okay fights with it, especially if you stay in that succession war era. Uh, kind of period of mechs as soon as you get to something a little bit more modern well there are more modern versions of the bushman around but it's okay for what it does it will run fairly cool with 14 heat sinks and the only real uh, heat intensive weapon is that large laser weirdly during the succession war where everybody was buying uh, mechs left and right to try to build what they could 
whenever there was a production run done by Scoble of Bushman, well, it did sell, but never as its own thing. It sold as spare parts for Griffin, Wolverines, and Shadowhawks. During the Jihad, you add more people buying the Bushmen. It was a little bit more popular but then, just because people needed to buy uh, mechs to fill out formations, and it fit the need at the time. There are quite a few variants of the darn thing, and the reason for it is that they were always trying to find someone to buy it. In uh, 2744, right before the Amer Civil War, you add the 3HB version, which is a high-quality one meant for the Royal Regiments of the Star League. The Star League, having not bought the original design, they were not too eager to get a uh, upgraded version of this one. The upgrade is pretty straightforward. Uh, streak SRM2s in the shoulders and an ER large laser. And the armor is replaced with ferrofibrous and double heat sinks. It's fairly efficient and uh, functional. And Scoble built a few like these again in the 3050s to try to, you know, sell the darn thing. During the first succession whirl, Scoble approached Aus Davion to try to sell them new Bushmen that would reflect their mentality, having the gun mount be a pair of AC2s and the shoulders having lasers. Aus Davion and the Federated Sons actually rejected the prototype and kept buying blackjacks instead, and the blackjack back in those days had a terrible reputation. The Anseatic League's version has a trio of uh, medium lasers in the gun mount and end mounted SRM 4s instead, and a pair of machine guns uh, similar to that of the Stinger on the arm that doesn't have the gun mount. This one is okay and will do a good job as a garrison mech. Later on, well, after the clan invasion, Scoble tried to sell the Bushmen again, and this time to the Draconis Combine, using Endo Steel in case to uh, save on weight and increase protection, putting an ER large laser in the gun mount, and the shoulder rack being either SRM-6 or MRM-10s, depending on what the DCMS wanted to put on them, and it was an easy swap in, swap out. You even add a Guardian ECM to increase electronic warfare capabilities. The DCMS decided to invest in more Wolverines instead because they knew the Wolverine. During the Fedcom Civil War, Scoble approached both sides of the war with a fairly expensive and fancy model with a large pulse laser, Artemis guided SRM6, ferrofibrous armor, an XL engine, and a sword because getting into melee was cool at the time. Nobody really wanted to buy that model, but mercenaries and specialist units still purchased it, and corporate security outfits also bought it. So this one didn't sell to militaries, but sold fairly well to everybody else. We've got even later models of this with uh, the Word of Blake militia model, because Scoble wanted to sell the darn thing. And Scoble was, well, not on the side of the Word of Blake, but they uh, were okay with just selling the darn thing. And they used really fancy equipment, clan ferrofibrous, endo-steel chassis, MML5s in the shoulder, light machine guns against infantry, a C3I computer built by Apple rather than the standard one that the Word of Blake was using, but still. Trying to still salvage the design because, well, the Word of Blake did buy it and that would make it a little bit uh, not liked. They also made a Bushman for the Republic of the Sphere using a partial wing, XL engine, a large re-engineered laser to take care of fancy armor, and the uh, MML5s remain on the shoulders. One of the bit of the difference on this one is that the uh, body is made of endo composite rather than endo steel to keep the costs down. It's not really a big change, but still. A few of those were used during the Battle of Terra against Clan Wolf, and Clan Wolf had decent problems with it. This wasn't terrible in that situation. And speaking of the wolves, well, Alaric Ward needs to rebuild his Toman, so Scoble approached him as well, saying, hey, we've got the Bushmen. And uh, this clan Bushmen has a partial wing. The shoulder launchers are ATM-3s. You've got the full set of um, electronic with an active probe and an ECM. And for contingencies, the gun opposite of the gun mount is an ER medium laser and a micro pulse laser to fight against infantry. Who knows where this is going to go? I don't often do this, but we're going to talk a little bit about some notable mech warriors that have used Bushmen over the year. At least there's two that I kind of know of. The first one being Gerald Basco, 
who was a captain during the Second Succession War for a small mercenary outfit. It was basically a company of mechs you brought around doing all sorts of mostly humanitarian work and rescue work in the periphery region of the Lyran Commonwealth and Draconis Combine, fighting a lot of pirates, things like that. The three command mechs in each of the lance were Bushmen, and the rest of the lance was lighter mechs, generally used for cavalry or fast movement. It wasn't anything fancy, and people really thought what was wrong with his griffins, but they did the job fairly well, and Basco simply disappeared at the end of the Second Su Succession War. Nobody really knows what happened to him. Maybe we should dig into some clan records. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? The second one is a demi presenter Talbot, who was at the Battle of Tukayid in a Bushman. There's a royal Bushman, to be precise. And he used it against the council of his commanding officer. But he managed to bring down a Hellbringer, seven battle armors, before the machine was destroyed by a summoner. So I hope you learned a few things about this unusual mech nowadays. And I hope you guys have a very nice rest of your day. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.